Hey YouTube, Land Tech Andrews there doing another action figure review and today I'm doing a review of the Batman uh, Bat Tech from Spin Masters, uh, formerly known as the Cape Crusader line. It's now the Bat Tech line and this is a figure for Deathstroke. Now, um, as this, hopefully if you load these in, in the right order, in the previous video I will say that I have, I picked this guy up at my local Tesco. Um, I didn't, I think I had seen them the previous time when I was in there and I kind of passed them over because I thought it was Talon. I don't, I kind of mis, uh, read who, which figure it was. I thought it was Talon and not, um, Deathstroke. But if I bring in the little sheet that you get with the figures, it shows the other figures in the wave that comes with this guy or that are in the same wave as this guy. So you have Batwing and Batman, which is a basic style of Batman, Bat-Tech Batman, Robin, Bat-Tech Batman, which is a rare version, a, bat, a Robin, which is a rare version. I think they're both tra more translucent. Uh, Deathstroke himself, and then Harley Quinn, who we've already reviewed. And then there's the next, there's a Platinum Tech, and then there's Biotech, and there, those are all blanked out. The, all you can see is um, shadows which looks like at least three more Batman figures, um, another Harley Quinn figure, it looks like another Deathstroke figure, and two more Robins, and this one up here, I can't tell, it has some sort of wings, it looks like a Batman, but it could be maybe an Azrael figure, but uh, only time will tell when it gets released. Oh, and on the back of the sheet, you just get that image of Batman in the Batcave with his bat tech armor suits, and Robin with him, and then the um, bike, the moto tank, and the Batmobile behind it, and that iconic dinosaur statue that was in some of the Batman Batcave drawings. So, moving on from that, we'll just quickly go on to the packaging. Packaging is pretty much the same thing you get with this new Bat Tech line. You have like a, unfortunately I ripped open the packaging to get it. You have like three mystery weapons, which, you can see I already ripped open and the back has just a whole ton of legalese on it. I think this is the European way to European versions and maybe the Canadians come. I think the standard American one actually has a cross sell of different figures in the line. Then on the bottom there's just a barcode and more legalese stuff. So packaging out of the way, we'll move on to the figure. So the figure itself, if I just bring in your good old standard tape measure stands just around the four inch mark so this is the 118 scale or one um three inch quarter inch scale style figures he comes with three accessories two of which are packed together which are these two swords for him to wield and beat the crap out of people with and then he comes with two weapons that are done in the same kind of orange style as him but i'm not sure if they're intended for him they could be um he comes with again Killer Moths, um, it's a kind of flame gun I would imagine it's called or whatever it is. So I had the same one in red which came with Harley Quinn. This time around it comes in a kind of metallic orange for Deathstroke and then this weapon, I'm not sure, I haven't seen this weapon before. Um, it could be from Firefly, I'm pretty sure it's probably Firefly's weapon. Um, it looks like a flamethrower. Unfortunately, I don't have that figure just to confirm that, but I'm sure people who watch, hopefully watching this will actually know if it's Fireflies or not. To me, it looks kind of like it would work as a Mr. Freeze gun as well, but if it was done in blue, it could work easily as a gun for Mr. Freeze. So that will just pop in here quickly. And you can hold it. It does look like it would work well for him if it was in more bluish color or just a metallic color but that's beside the point so he holds his swords quite nicely unfortunately as with a lot of these figures there is no sheath or anything for him to put the sword into and if you want him he can dual wield the guns quite nicely as well just pop them into his hands they have fairly big handles so Bear with me a moment when I figure it out and try to do it on camera without hopefully breaking the figure. So he does have, you can know, dual wield his guns that he comes with. 
and overall he's quite a nice figure now his sculpt is pretty cool it does remind me a bit of the kind of i wouldn't say the movie verse but the version from arrow and stuff like that and kind of you know the more kind of live action style depictions of of slade wilson so it has a bit of that and has comic book stuff on him because it has that kind of silvered armor uh the kind of I'm not sure if it's chainmail or something along those lines. It's kind of, it's done differently in different iterations. So you have like, it's kind of like a scale mail at one point. But uh, you have that kind of on his chest. You have the hood with the iconic hood with the one eye and the the two-tone mask with the one darked out side and the one orange side. He does have the little bandana pieces or the tassel pieces coming off the hood. I would be... I would say to be careful with this it looks like they're a separate pieces that are glued in place so if you move it around too much you could break them off uh, he does a peg hole in the back so he can support a backpack uh, should you have one unfortunately the only backpack I have at the moment is a Batman one so we'll just throw that in there so you can see how it plugs in the backpack backpack peg on most of the figures are universal so they will you can swap pick and match which things you want Articulation wise, he is pretty much the same articulation as the rest of this line. His arms are on his swivel, can rotate around. He can only go out that much because of the shoulder armor piece. It's not a rubber piece and it's not designed to move out of the way. So he doesn't get that much movement in the arms for that respect. He does have a arm joint, a single jointed elbow with his swivel. Nothing in the wrist, which is um, typical for this line. Nothing in the waist, the body is all one piece, so there's no waist articulation or upper diaphragm joint. Uh, he does have splits, a bit more hindered on this side because of his gun holster. He does have forward kick, he does have back kick, he does have a single jointed knee with a swivel. He has the upper thigh swivel and this is where it gets a little weird. So. If you look on this side, on his right leg, he actually has a sculpted on pistol holster. No pistol though, um, but if you use the thigh swivel, there's actually a cut where the pocket top of the holster is to the bottom of the holster. I get why they have to do it that way because of the design aspect of these. It's similar on the opposite side. You have this kind of band going around. So when you move the legs, it looks kind of awkward and out of place. Other than that, He's pretty nicely sculpted. He does have that um, same armoring stuff on his back, but it's not done in silver. It's just done in the basic. I wouldn't say it's black uh, plastic. It looks like an off, kind of a very off brown. I'm not sure if it's picking it up on camera. It's like a, it's not quite black, black. I mean, if I bring in Catwoman here, you can see she's very, She ha her entire uniform is black. His is slightly like a slightly gray black, metallic black is the best way to describe it. It's not pure black anyway. But just to do a bit of a rogues gallery, we'll bring in some of the Spin Master figures. Now, let me see if I can get Bat Catwoman to stand up. She can be a little tricky at times. Come on, Selena, you want to stand up. She's gonna, probably gonna fall in a minute. Uh, we've got Riddler. We got the previously reviewed Harley Quinn. Uh, because I have him handy, we'll put in the old Bane here. And Joker. Still on the ground, but we'll bring him back up. We have the first version Joker as opposed to the one with all the demolition stuff strapped to him. And. If we can get him to stand a little bit better than that. Just in the back, and he's probably going to fall over and knock over anyone. And then we have Mr. Freeze. So, there is a sort of rogues gallery of the villain characters from the Spin Master line. I know there is other ones. I do have a few other figures. I'm just a, a bit too lazy to go drag them out. Um, one of the most notable, well, two of the most notable characters that I haven't seen in this lineup so far yet is... Uh, Penguin and Two-Face. I haven't seen them do a Two-Face figure or a Penguin, which is kind of more iconic style Batman villains. They have done some kind of... Oh, there goes Selina. Uh, there, they have done a few more of the kind of obscure ones like Killer Moth, Firefly, um, 
I wouldn't say Clayface is a killer, uh, what's that, killer croc, um, uh, killer moth as well, killer croc, uh, king shark. And there's a few kind of oddities that you wouldn't be as popular as some of the more known characters, but e e either which way, they have some really nice figures. And then, oh, and Talon is one, like he, Talon wouldn't be as well known. Well, I suppose he's getting more known now, but like when he, they first started off with Talon, he wasn't as popular a character. And then just for another size comparison, here he is with the, was it Mattel did this, this line? This is the Arkham, I want to say Asylum, could be Arkham City. It's one of the Arkham video game versions of Deathstroke that they did in the Trench Quarter Inch line. It was part of the multiverse, I think it was the Mattel multiverse line. And so they did more kind of realistic designs for some of the characters. Some of them were kind of still, there were some based on movies, some based on the video games. So I picked up a bunch of them. Um, so... This is the Deathstroke from that, and it's the only other three and a quarter inch Deathstroke I have. I know there was, I think, a DC Direct version as well, or was it the, the DC Unlimited line had a Deathstroke that was kind of more comic accurate. But other than that, here is Deathstroke, and he's actually pretty sweet. He's a good looking figure if you can't. Like, I'm not sure if the prices on the old Mattel one has gone up that much, but like, if you want a fairly basic budget one, he's the one to go to i know it's a bit rare to find at the moment but hopefully they'll have him out in better numbers the only other way you could get him as far as i know was part of a two-pack with batman versus deathstroke and a kind of a weird bat tank type thing uh i think that's a lot harder to get than the individual one but then again it is deathstroke he's a super popular character so you could end up having to pay scalper prices unfortunately for this sort of figure so there you go guys hope you enjoyed this video review for the Batman Bat Tech Spin Masters Batman Bat Tech line. That's a bit of a mouthful. Um, Deathstroke figure. So, as I say in my videos, please feel free to like, comment, and subscribe to my channel. Cheers, guys.